Cretinocystosis is obviously a diagnosis that's um, presents in about one in 3,500 patients, and it's a really stressful process if your kid is diagnosed with it. Cranial synostosis is an early fusion of one of the growth plates of the skull bone. So when you're born, you have two plates in the front, two plates in the middle, and then one plate in the back. And then you have spaces in between those plates that are growth plates. So as the brain continues to grow and develop, those growth plates continue to expand and bone fills into those spaces as time goes on. Now in a certain subset of patients, unfortunately, that suture may fuse early and it may start to cause issues associated with pressure on the brain as time goes on, and it can cause a significant abnormality of their head shape. And so here at Arkansas Children's Hospital, we've developed a great system for the management of these craniofacial patient populations and these early fusion cranial synostosis patient populations. And there are varying degrees of fusion that can occur with that. So there are some kids that can have just a palpable ridge there, and oftentimes those kids don't require surgical intervention for that. But it can be a noticeable palpable ridge that we can actually burr down if it's noticeable to the general population and it's usually a pretty straightforward and quick process. But then there are way more severe forms of that. Usually when you have a fusion of your coronal sutures, your sagittal suture, or your lambdoid sutures, those tend to be more significant sutures that fuse. So we tend to have to operate more on other types of fusion besides that metopic suture synostosis. I think one of the first things that families are really trying to decide when they're in my clinic visit is, is why does my kid need surgery? They may have some issues with headaches or head banging, they may do things of that nature, but overall they seem like they're okay. So what is the reason for the surgery? And that's usually something that we have to rehash a few times in our clinic visit is, is it's not just who they are now, but who they will be as they continue to grow and develop. And what we want is for them to have a normal, happy childhood. And we don't want them to suffer through headaches and to have neurocognitive delays and to be behind in the process because of the signs of pressure that they're having. We provide the full gamut of surgical options here at Arkansas Children's Hospital. We do endoscopic strip craniectomies, both with cranial springs as well as helmets, and we do total cranial vault reconstruction surgery. Um, if your kid does require surgery, um, we have some of the best numbers here in the country in terms of blood loss, in terms of post-operative admission to the ICU, and pain control and management processes. As the director of the Cranial Max Facial Team, I, I run a multidisciplinary clinic. Um, so in a certain subset of kids with this cranial synostosis, they are syndromic. So there are types of syndromes called Apert, Say3-Shotson, Cruzon's, Pfeiffer syndrome, all that can be associated with other unique manifestations from a head and neck perspective that require a multidisciplinary team. And our multidisciplinary team consists of myself, a neurosurgeon, an ENT doctor, an oral surgeon, um, a dentist, an orthodontist, nutrition, audiology, speech. And we work together as a team to make sure that each one of the issues that a kid may be having associated with their head and neck condition are targeted in that process as well. And that we're focusing to make sure that they are holistically taken care of families will always come back and talk about new things that their kids are doing because of this process or how they've picked up and grown or how they're a lot happier than they were before. We've had really positive results with this process overall and so it's a really rewarding career for um, myself as a craniofacial surgeon and it's one of the patient populations that we love to take care of for that reason.